In this next series of lessons, uh, we're going to have a look at different ways to actually um, make samples or get samples of a total population. And this method here called the capture recapture method is a very, very interesting method of getting a sample. And it's used often by biologists. And they want to collect data about the size of animal populations. Now, the interesting thing is it's very hard to work out the total population of, of a particular type of fish in a lake. So this method is used by biologists to work this sort of thing out. So what happens is a random sample, first of all, is captured and tagged, and then they're let go. And then sometime later, another random sample is captured, and the number of tagged animals in this sample, in the second sample, is used to predict the total population. And it's based on this assumption, okay, it's a very important assumption that the proportion of tagged animals is the same in the total population as in the sample. Now that won't mean a lot to you until you actually look at an example here. So let's see what happens in a situation where a this sort of capture recapture method is, is used. So a biologist catches a random sample of 120 fish from a lake. Each one of them is tagged and then released. And it's at, what happens then is one month later, another random sample of 80 fish is caught. And it is found that six of these have tags. So six out of the 80 in the second sample have tags. How will the biologist estimate how many fish there are in the lake? All right, so you can see that the method depends on, uh, for its accuracy on both the first and the second samples being random. So this is how, how we do it. First of all, we let T represent, so we'll put equal, the total number of fish in the lake. And we don't know that number. So we call it T because it's an unknown. Okay, so the fraction of tagged fish in the first one, so the first fraction, the fraction of tagged fish must be equal to 120 out of the total population. So there's our first fraction. We don't know T, but there it is, 120 out of T. Now, the fraction of tag fish. Now, let's look at the second one. The fraction of tagged fish in the second sample must be equal to, now we've said 6, out of a total of 80 that were caught. I'm just going to move this up so I've got a little bit more space. There we go. So you can see 120 out of the total was the first lot of tagging, and then six were tagged out of the next 80 that were caught. And so we can assume, therefore, so we can say therefore, or hence, which is just a logic statement, 120 over t, that fraction, we assume simplifies down to this fraction as well because we're catching them they're random so it's caught in the same proportion we would imagine if we knew what that was 120 over this would simplify down to 6 over 80 remember it's just an assumption but it's a pretty good one because it's all random so now that means that if we use our algebra we can actually turn this around as long as we turn this one around at the same time. And I'm just going to take this up here so we don't have to move up anymore. That means that T, the total number of fish, must be 80 over 6 times 120. Remember to get that 120 away so T is on its own. And when we work this out, we can estimate then that the total population of fish was 1,600. So that's what we'll say approximately 1,600 fish 
in the lake. Now you can see there are a few assumptions, but in sorry, not in that. that. Let's just clear that out. Try that again. All right, so I'll put that there. That's at times 120. There we go. So we can assume that. Yeah, there are a few assumptions, but it's still a very, very good way of estimating population sizes when it's impossible to actually count them.